Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Nicolas Leiva. I'm a network engineer at Cisco, and today I'm going to talk about the Container Network Interface, or CNI. But before we do so, uh, we need to take a step back and talk about containers, Kubernetes networking, and hopefully finish up with a demo at the end. All of this in five minutes, I don't know. So let's say we have a server. Its physical interface is in the root namespace. Uh, namespaces let you isolate system resources. For the purpose of this talk, we are going to concentrate on network namespaces. Uh, network, uh, namespaces is one of the primitives that containers are made out of. So the container runtime, like container D or Rocket, is going to create a new network namespace for your container or pod. A pod is a group of one or more containers. At this point in time, the container is completely isolated from the network. So to make it more interesting, we're going to add another pod. The Kubernetes networking model requires that all containers can communicate with all other containers without the use of network address translation. A Linux bridge can forward the packet across our containers, and virtual Ethernet pairs are going to connect or create a tunnel between these different network namespaces. If you want to reach external host, you can use NAT. Now, if we add more nodes or servers, uh, you're, you can probably just get away with configuring a static route on an external switch or router. If this keeps growing, you might end up with a setup like this. And then you might want to rely on a routing protocol like BGP to dynamically route the pod networks as they come along. The point I'm trying to make is the network comes in different shapes and forms. For this reason, Kubernetes does not configure the network. It relies instead of an, uh, on a CNI plugin. A CNI plugin configures the network from, com uh, from configuring the interface, allocating IP addresses, and routing. It's a function of the container runtime to invoke the CNI plugin. So CNI is this, this interface between these two elements. It is the specification and also a set of libraries to build CNI plugins. It is started off with two commands to add and delete a network from a pod. No, a pod from a network. So let's look at actual Go code. This is how the sam sample plugin looks like, and all of the plugins out there look just like this. The commands have a very specific signature, and any configuration requirements for your network go as a field in this specific uh, struct. So now let me briefly explain uh, the use case that I was trying to solve when I first started playing around with CNI plugins. I wanted to load balance to remote pods in two different locations. For that purpose, I wanted to reach them directly without any sort of um, network uh, address translation, which is challenging with IPv4. So it's the perfect use case for IPv6. Unfortunately, Kubernetes can only track a single IP address uh, per pod as of today. So uh, what I did in this case is to encode the IPv4 address on the IPv6 one. So this is how I did it. You don't have to do it like that. But anyways, I just wanted to, so you're going to see that in the demo. All right, so let's see this in action. I'm going to add a container to a network. And a good candidate for that is list writes container from scratch. So if you haven't had a chance to watch uh, this, her session recording and want to really understand what containers are made out of, go check it out. It's really cool. She creates a container in 16 lines of Go code or so. All I'm doing is just uh, making sure we create a new network namespace for this container, and then we invoke the CNI plugin. All right, demo time. Now let me see with these changes. OK, cool, that is working. So how do I get rid of this now? OK. So here I have the code. I'm not going to show you that again, because uh, it is exactly what I just showed. I'm just going to execute it, just like she did. And 
we're going to get into the container. We're just going to see back the output from the CNI plugin. You can see the IP addresses that were allocated. Trust me that this IP before address is encoded in here. Uh, IP before addresses are expressed in, with de in decimal format. This is X, so it's different, but it's the same thing. So now we are inside the container. Uh, you can see now that we actually have an, um, the interface and that we have uh, IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. So now I'm just going to go try to ping that from uh, somewhere else. So I'm going to just ping that and see. All right, it worked. Thank you very much, everyone.